are still on that Gauteng cabinet reshuffle made by the Premier. The DA says it hopes the Gauteng Health Department will improve from here going forward. We're joined by the organization's Gauteng MPL and health spokesperson, Jack Bloom. Jack, good evening and thank you so much for your time tonight. Is this a decision you welcome? Well, um, it's good that we've got a, a permanent uh, MEC. Uh, it's for several months now we've had an acting MEC, and I, I wish her all the best in a very daunting job. I hope she can she can fix up this department, which I think has very deep rooted problems. Mm -hmm. It's part of why the you know Premier has said he's making this decision as a result also of some of the recommendations from the Public Service Commission. When you look at the state of affairs at the health department, does it also warrant this expanded team that we're told is also going to be coming in to try and bolster up the efforts? Well, I think it's a good idea to have an intervention team, as the Premier has announced, but then you must implement what they recommend. In fact, uh, in November 2017, after the Life of Sedimeni disaster, there was a similar intervention team, and I think they made very good uh, recommendations, but uh, they weren't carried out. Uh, previous to that, PricewaterhouseCoopers did a, a two-year intervention, uh, didn't seem to do the trick. So I, I really think that uh, this time around, the new MEC must get it right. She must do what it takes, and once and for all, clear out the, the deep-rooted rot in this department. What is it about the health department that does make it so difficult to get a level of stability? But it also sounds that there are significant problems with the way things are structured, which of course then inhibits the ability to deliver quality services to the people of Gauteng. Well, I think uh, part of it starts at the very top. Uh, and we now have a number of uh, acting positions that need to be filled, and we must put the right people in these positions. But it's not just a head office thing. There's uh, 35 hospitals in this province. You've got to make sure that there's decent management in all of them. There's nearly 300 clinics as well. And I think that's the challenge, that uh, from top to bottom, you've got to put the right people in the right positions. You must monitor them. But uh, at the end of the day, they have to deliver. Uh, I, I think the problem with this department is they haven't punished uh, corruption in the past. We mm -hmm. still have corruption cases dating back more than 10 years when Brian Flonger was the, the health MEC. So unless there's real consequences, uh, unless you get rid of the people who are part of these networks of corruption, and I think there's political uh, connections here as well, which is part of the problem, uh, I don't think this department is going to be fixed. But I hope the new MEC listens to the recommendations of the latest intervention team. But honestly, this time they must get it right. I mean, the people of, of Gauteng have suffered for far too long from poor quality services. And we're now in the middle of a, of a pandemic and that needs uh, urgent action uh, to, to tackle it, make sure that we, we don't get a, a resurgence. How important is it for the MEC and for the intervention team to especially get the response against COVID-19 correct? Well, I think they must start with uh, proper figures. At the moment, we've got figures of, acting inf of uh, active infections of about 1,200, but we also told there's uh, more than 1,500 people in, in our hospitals. So I think they must uh, get accurate figures. They've got to track this uh, epidemic. And uh, the Health Outing Health Department hasn't published uh, district figures of infections since November 4th. Now, how are you going to track the epidemic if you don't know where the new infections are happening? Uh, I, I think that that's task number one. Uh, uh, know the extent of this epidemic, monitor it closely and intervene speedily uh, so that we don't see a surge such as we've seen in other provinces in this country. When you talk about some of the individuals who could well still be in the department, who may be responsible for some of the inefficiency and even corruption that has been taking place there, and you say that some of them are politically connected and therefore uh, would, would enjoy some level of protection, I mean, doesn't that mean that effectively this intervention team is going to be fighting a losing battle? If there's been opportunity to get rid of some of these individuals before, and it hasn't happened, do you have reason to believe that things will be different this time around? 
Well, I think the expectations now are very high. And, uh, you know, this is the Premier's last chance. You know, uh, he presided over the Lyman City Mani uh, scandal. He was the one who appointed the head of the department at the time. He was the one that appointed Kodani Mishlangu as, as MEC. Uh, then he replaced her with Gwen Ramapopo, and she didn't succeed. He replaced her with Bandile Masuku, and he didn't uh, succeed. So uh, I think uh, the buck stops with the Premier. You know, he's made these appointments uh, and he must hold uh, the new MEC accountable, make sure that the new head of department can do the job and, and don't uh, interfere politically. You know, hire the, the most competent people and, and they must do the job. And whether it hits uh, politically connected people, so be it. They must go. All right. Jack Bloom is the DA Gauteng Shadow Health MEC. Thanks for your time tonight, uh, Mr. Bloom.